and panic in his book said, the Daily Telegraph leader writer cynically observed the judges were perhaps not ideally suited to lecture their fellow human beings on acceptable conduct in condition of extreme deprivation. I give below Lord Denning's comment in his book. This is what he said. None of that eloquence of Lord Coleridge satisfies me that the judges were right. I think Mr. Baron Huddleston ought to have left the decision to the jury without directing them that the men were guilty of murder. They should have left it to them to say whether the men were to be excused by the extreme peril in which they were placed. I have no doubt that left to give a general verdict, a Devon jury would have found the men not guilty. Subsequently, Dudley and Stevens were reprieved by Queen Victoria. The death sentence was reduced to six months <coughs> imprisonment. The moral of the story is this. If judges are insensitive to the universal acclaim of the general public, then it might provoke an un unexpected reaction from the people. The next story is a clear example of what I've just said. Five minutes more. If I cannot finish it in five minutes more, you have this. Or if you, have, you can't get a copy, you can deliver, uh, you can read it in the internet, I said. The ne next story is... The next story is a clear example of what I've just said. And it involves the great Lord Mansfield who, as all lawyers know, was one of the great judges of the common law. In fact, he was reputed to be the father of the commercial law, as we understand them today. Although Lord Mansfield was morally right, he took the wrong step by ignoring the law of the land. The greatest tragedy that befell Lord Mansfield was in the Gordon Riots of 1780. One of the subjects on which he had always shown his enlightened views was that of religious freedom. But he was in advance of his time. On one occasion, the city of London elected a man as sheriff. They knew he was a dissenter and would not serve. They imposed a fine on him for not serving. Lord Mansfield held that the fine was invalid. It was a piece of persecution. He said, temporal punishment ought not to be inflicted for mere opinions with respect particular to particular modes of worship. The city was so upset that many regarded Lord Mansfield as little better than an infidel. On another occasion, a Roman Catholic priest had said Mass contrary, contrary to the law of England. He was tried before Mansfield and a jury. He was undoubtedly guilty as the law then stood, but Lord Mansfield summed up for an acquittal. His words were, take notice, if you bring him in guilty, the punishment is very severe, a daily punishment indeed, nothing less than perpetual imprisonment. The jury found him not guilty. But many zealous protestants were scandalized. Lord George Gordon then led the cry of no popery. Popery means no pope. England is, has their own uh, head of the Church of England, that is the king. No popery. And, and stirred up the people to violence. The great object of vengeance was Lord Mansfield. The mob marched to his house and burned it down. The, ins the insurrection was the insurrection was quickly quelled, and Lord George Gordon was tried for high treason. Lord Mansfield presided at the trial. 
Nowadays, we should have considered it undesirable, lest he be thought to be prejudiced against Gordon. But Lord Mansfield tried the case with perfect propriety. And what happened was, Lord George Gordon was acquitted. So the man who instigated the burning of his house, because he gave a decision which was not according to the law, the law was that a Roman Catholic cannot preach in England. And yet the man who was charged before him was released. I, I think my five minutes is up. I shall not read further. To end it, I refer to the famous case of, Param, uh, of public prosecutor against Param Kumarasamy. I, I will not read it out to you. It is here. You can read it for yourself. It, it, was, it was a case. It was famous. It was famous because it is an, a clear example of judicial independence. As, as you know, Mr. Kumarasamy was prosecuted for the offence of sedition. And he was tried before me. And I called for his defence. I called for his defence because I applied the law of the land and called for his defence. And I was severely criticised by the international press. But when I acquitted him at the end of the trial, I must have done the right thing because the Attorney General did not appeal. I shall end with a short, short message. If, if you read further, I, I gave the law's definition of sedition, which is not inciting people to violence but just to criticize his sedition. I've explained it if you read further. And, and, in, and in England, the judge cannot find a person guilty of sedition, even if it comes within the law as stated. Uh, but everything depends on the jury. But in Malaysia and in Australia, there was no jury. So everything depends on the on the independence of the judiciary.